Here I whether am. I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life, <laughs> or whether that station will be held by anyone else. <laughs> Must have a copper for long books, ever. <laughs> Don't worry. Listen. <laughs> the Martys were dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. The register of their burial is signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner, Scrooge. Oh, but he was a tight fist. <laughs> <of man. laughs> Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel has ever stuck out, generous fire, secret and self-contained, and solitary as a single girl, the Andrew Gilpin would matchmake. He carried his own low temperature, always about him. He iced his office in the dog days and didn't thought one degree at Christmas like Louise Smith, the ice maiden. <laughs> at this festive season of year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessities. <laughs> Others of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. <laughs> you wish to remain anonymous? <laughs> How can you claim gifted? <laughs> I wish to be left alone, sir. Since you asked me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I may not marry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people like students marry. Whereabouts <laughs> <laughs> with my taxes? Many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it. <laughs> 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 then it also will be borne in mind that Scrooge had not bestowed one thought on the Marty's since his last mention of his seven years dead partners that afternoon. And then let any man explain to me, if he can, how it happened that Scrooge, having his key in the lock of the door, saw in the door nooker, without its undergoing any intermediate presses, pre process of change, not a nooker, but Marty's face. It <laughs> was not angry or ferocious, but looked at Scrooge as Marty used to look, with ghostly spectacles turned up on his ghostly forehead. As Scrooge looked fixedly at this phenomenon, it was a nooker again. Darkness is cheap like Ashley skates, and Scrooge liked it. <laughs> but before he shut his heavy door, he walked through his rooms to see that all was right. He had just enough recollection of the face to desire to do that. After several turns, he sat down again. As he threw his head back in the chair, his glance happened to rest upon a bell, <laughs> a disused bell that hung in the room, and it communicated for some purpose, now forgotten with the chamber in the highest story of the building. It is with great astonishment and with a strange, inexplicable dread that as he looked, he saw this bell begin to swing. It swung so softly <laughs> in the outset that it made, scarcely made a sound, but soon it rang out loudly, and so did every bell in the house. The cellar door flew open with a booming sound. Inside. Not the usual sound of the Polish immigrants below. <laughs> and then he heard the noise much louder on the floors below. Then coming up the stairs, then coming straight towards his door. Tumble still, I won't believe it. His colour changed though, like some ladies will, and they do all the work. When without a pause they came on through the heavy door and passed into the room before his eyes. Upon their coming in, the dying flame leaped up as though it cried, I know them, the Marty's ghosts, and fell again. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 